Master Your Mindset Radio, Episode 104. Welcome to Master Your Mindset Radio, the show where we empower you to discover your true self before the world told you differently. Now for your host, Elizabeth Nader. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode. Let's talk today about the mindset involved in attachments to outcomes. Do you get attached to an outcome? Of course you do. We all do. But this is really about disappointment. When we get overly attached to an outcome and that outcome doesn't come to pass, we are then dealing with disappointment. It's really a trap of expectations. And I did a podcast a long time ago on the difference between expectation and expectations and how important that difference was. But I want to get into this a little bit more today from the standpoint of attachment to an outcome, because we all have that, whether or not we say it outright to ourselves, we all have an idea in our mind when we enter into a situation of how we think it should come out, how we want it to come out, but how we think it should come out. And we get attached to a particular outcome. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. And so we get disappointed or we see it as failure. You get disappointed in yourself when you fail to achieve an outcome that you attached yourself to. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have in your mind a vision or a desire or a plan or a goal for a certain outcome, but I want you to think about how deep is your attachment to that outcome because the attachment may be the thing that challenges your mindset. The attachment may be the thing that doesn't allow you the flexibility of having a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, which we've talked about before. A growth mindset is not so much about the outcome, it's about the journey and the experience and the fixed mindset says, well, if this doesn't happen a certain way, then I've failed. So it's important before any situation, any disappointment that may happen in your life as a result of an outcome that you didn't want, you have to think about your mindset before it happens and after it happens, because that's really everything. So yes, you should have visions and goals and plans and dreams, but you shouldn't be unnecessarily attached to an outcome to the point where all you see is failure when it doesn't happen the way that you want it to. When an outcome is worse than we have expected, we experience disappointment. When an outcome exceeds or meets our expectation, then we're happy, right? We feel satisfied, we feel achieved, we feel motivated, we wanna keep going, we wanna keep pursuing other goals. But when it doesn't happen that way, we often see it as failure. And we get frustrated, we have regret, we feel disappointed in ourselves. But the truth is, it's because of an expectation, it's because of an attachment to an outcome. And it may stem from a misguided certainty. What does that mean? Well, an expectation ends up being a trap for you. If you have a misguided certainty attached to it because those expectations may not be realistic, but they're going to dictate how you feel afterwards. They're going to dictate how you feel about the missed achievement or the failure, however you see it. So we've got to think about our mindset before we go into a challenge, before we start pursuing a goal, because that's really key to how we'll experience maybe missing it or a disappointment? Do you have a misguided certainty about that outcome? Expectations are not so in themselves so dangerous. They're somewhat harmless, but they end up getting the better of us if they're too rigid. So a misguided certainty may be something where we have a rigid barrier, a rigid expectation. We don't allow for any flexibility or a different outcome that still may be good in the long run, we just have such a strong attachment to an outcome that it becomes really a trap to us because we've now connected emotions to our goals. 
and we have a certainty about the outcome of our goals that's somewhat misguided, as I've said. Because maybe we aim too high this time. Maybe that isn't the right next goal for us. Maybe it needs to be a different outcome. But we're not allowing for that when we tie emotion to the outcome and expectation and a certainty that says there's no flexibility. So thus comes the disappointment, right? That is where then we suffer. So we went into it with the wrong mindset. We didn't meet our goal. We didn't meet our expectation. The outcome wasn't what we wanted. Then we are disappointed. And then we get hung up. We get hung up. We see it as a failure. We see a lack of continuity between what we thought should happen and what really happened. We see the world as black and white. Well, this had to happen, but it didn't. Therefore, I'm wrong. Therefore, I'm not good at this. Therefore, I'm going down the wrong path. We make all these grand assumptions because the outcome that we were so tied to didn't happen. And disappointment sets in. And disappointment makes us question everything. Makes us question our decisions. Make us Makes us question our gifts, our talents. Makes us question our purpose. But had we not tied ourselves so strongly to the outcome, had we not been so certain that it had to be one way, would we in fact experience disappointment or would we simply see when something didn't work out exactly the way we thought when prescribed that we still see success, we still have an opportunity to learn, we still see an adjustment to our path that's beneficial. It's all in the mindset before you face the challenge and the goal and the mindset that you have after you meet it or you don't meet it. But attaching yourself to a single outcome, to a single train of thought, any kind of single perception is a setup for disappointment is a setup for not only that, but setting yourself back. A setup for being unable to move forward after you don't meet a goal, after you have some sort of failure or lack of success and outcome in the way that you wanted to. So what do we do? We need to think more objectively, I think, and have more clarity about the goals we're trying to obtain. You know, we set them high, we set them, they're challenging, we should do that, we should stretch ourselves. But if we're not honest and objective about what it takes to meet those goals or where we really are right now in life, we set ourselves up potentially for disappointment. I think we get so hung up on this culture of just, you you say it, you can have it. You just put it on your vision board and it's going to happen. But you have to do work. You have to realistically look at where you are today with your talents, with your skills, with your influence, your Metron, I've talked about that before. Where are you today and does that match the goal? And what do you have to do to get there? And often people forget the in-between. It's the what do you have to do to get there piece of it that people miss. So they have an expectation, they set a goal, they don't make it, they're disappointed, they're stymied, and they stop they get they get frozen they get they get just paralyzed but they didn't focus on the in between what it took to get to that goal and that meet that expectation and were they being realistic i'm not saying that you shouldn't have big goals that dreams that scare you they should scare you a little bit but the real realistic piece of this comes in in the in between of what you need to do to achieve that outcome you're attached to the outcome Are you attached to the work it takes? Are you attached to the sacrifice? Are you attached to the daily grind that you need to get there? Often we're not, but we are attached to the outcome. So when the outcome doesn't happen, the disappointment sets in. But the better that we set ourselves up in the beginning with the correct mindset, the less likely we are to be disappointed in what we see as a failure because we're all going to have them. In fact, if we do it right, we see it as a learning opportunity and as a springboard to the next goal and to the next potential in our life, to the next door opening, if we see it correctly. You have to manage your disappointments. You're going to have them. You have to question the assumptions you make about your goals and reaching them and the outcomes that you make beforehand. 
and then you have to deal correctly with what actually happens. So what do you take away from this? Don't get overly attached to an outcome. Challenge yourself to have the correct mindset going into a goal setting situation, going into a big project, going into a situation where you want to achieve something. Make sure you have the correct mindset. Make sure that you haven't put yourself in a situation where you're so attached to an outcome, but it's not even really one that allows for flexibility that allows for different things to happen, that maybe your certainty is a bit misguided, and then focus on the in-between. Don't forget the in-between. You have to do that work. It doesn't happen without that. Anyone you've seen that's very successful, you may sometimes fall into the trap of thinking it just happened for them. But if you talk to them, you're going to find out the in-between is where the fear was, the daily work. They, They just slugged it out day after day, however long that took. It's the in-between. And then when it happens or doesn't happen, deal with your mindset correctly on the other side of it. So that's how we manage the trap of expectations. That's how we manage an over-attachment to an outcome. And this is how we really ultimately allow ourselves to be flexible enough to experience the things in life that we're supposed to experience, to set our goals high enough, but not hold ourselves to an expectation that doesn't make sense. And allow ourselves to be flexible enough to experience what we're supposed to experience because you either succeed or you learn. There is no failure unless you quit and unless you decide to see it that way. But there are several steps before that happens. It starts at the beginning and the details are in the in-between. And then the outcome is what you have to manage in your mind. Hope that helps you. Talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to Master Your Mindset Radio. Before you go, please visit ElizabethNader.com to learn more about the Mindset Maven and how she is guiding high performers to map their mindset to their message so they can effectively express who they are and why their ideas should win. Looking forward to seeing you online.